Hello everyone, I'm Colin Komet. You know, throughout these episodes, I ask all of you who are watching, uh, if you've got a tip or a hint or, or a, a hack, uh, to send it in to me, and many of you had, and that's what I'm going to show you today, some of the tips and ideas that you've sent to me. I want to start off today with a tip from Paul from Ottawa. And Paul has lots of great ideas, and I really like this one. And what he's suggesting, whenever you're mixing up epoxy glues, and I know I very often will just mix a tiny bit of it, what Paul's suggestion is, is to mix a little bit of it in these plastic spoons. These are throwaway plastic spoons. You often get them with takeout foods and so on. And sometimes you're just, you know, it's just a little bit, you know, there's a chip or something, a little piece of wood that's come up part and you don't need to mix a great big uh, wad of glue for that and you can mix enough of it in a little plastic spoon mix it up like that put it on your wood that you're going to glue back together or whatever your chip and you know what when you're finished you can just take that and wipe that out of there and even the glue that you wipe out, I would hang on to that because I like to see the glue that I've taken out or the glue that's left over. When it's hard, then I know that the glue inside here is hard. So uh, it's a great idea, a quick and easy way of reusing these. The next tip is from Michael, and Michael suggests when you purchase, sometimes you can purchase these kits that come with some uh, concrete or brick screws, and they also come with a bit. Now, this bit obviously didn't come with this set here because it's quite a bit bigger, but I picked it because it's a little bit easier to see. And what, of course, you do is drill into the brick, and you want to drill at least deep enough to accommodate, because these usually come with inserts or hangers or, or whatever they're called where you live, and then, of course, the screw goes in there. Now, the problem with these things is how, how far do you drill in, because you usually don't want to drill further than you have to, because you're often drilling into concrete or brick or something like that. And in the past, what I've done is, you know, I've used a a marking pen and that kind of works but it usually wears off somewhere and it gets covered with dust it's hard to see the other thing that I've done and I'm sure many of you have as well is putting tape on there the thing that I don't like about tape is usually I go a little past it because I want to go a little bit deeper then it I, I keep getting a little bit deeper and deeper and it starts shredding sometimes it comes off Michael suggests painting using like some spray paint and just spraying the part that you want it to go up to and I really like that idea because it's going to get right in of course it's going to get right into the flutes um, so it's going to tend to stay a little bit more and of course when you're drilling into concrete or brick anything that you're using in there is going to wear off fairly quickly so paint is a really good substitute to use for that sort of a situation so thanks Michael that's a good tip and I'm going to use that next time. The next idea is from Richard and what Richard's done in his shop he found an old bicycle wheel and I've got I've, I have one too and I've left the tire and the tube on it because I didn't want to take it off because I have a little cart for this um, but what he's done he took the tire and the and the tube out and he's got it sort of held in place above his shop he can actually spin it around I can't really do that with mine this is just for show so you can see I think it's a great idea so he's got it suspended so what does he use it for he puts his clamps there what a great place to put your clamps so spring clamps you could put C clamps up there and when they're right above your workbench like that uh, you can put them anywhere <laughs> my little tire is moving here um, and you know what you could even put these quick release clamps on there so you know what it's a really great idea and all of your clamps are right there right handy um, right above your workbench it's a great idea Richard thanks the next tip comes from Jack and Jack suggests using machinist's blocks now I don't have machinist blocks so I've made this up now what a machinist block is a piece of metal like this it's an inch thick it's two inches high and three inches wide and typically but not always they have holes drilled all the way through so 
all the way through on one side, on the other side, and on the ends. And the purpose of the holes is in case you want to attach it to something or put two of them together, uh, it just gives you some different options that you can use. Now, I don't have machinist squares, so I just made these up, but the purpose of them is because they're absolutely precision. And for example, if you want to set up your table saw at one inch, you can set it just like that and now you know that that's exactly one inch. If you want two inches, you don't even have to measure it, you just set it like that and that's two inches. If you want three inches, you can set it up like that. And if you have a couple of them, and often they're sold in pairs, you could actually, if you have trouble setting your table, or sorry, your fence, you could actually use two of them on either side of your blade to help to align your fence. It's a great idea. Now, many of you have watched me using these kinds of measuring blocks. This is the same kind of idea, but these are much smaller. You can see that I've got the mark. There's half inch, three eighths, quarter, and so on. And I use these for measuring, usually for you measuring the height of the blade, sometimes for using the thickness, uh, but it's the same, the same principle using these machinist blocks. So if you go to the article in Woodwork Web, uh, there'll be a picture in there. You'll be able to see what they're like, and I'll put some links uh, actually to both of these measuring bars that I use all the time uh, and to these measuring blocks. So that's a great idea, Jack. Uh, I think I'm going to pick up myself a pair of these because they're very, very handy. And some of you are going to say, why can't I just cut my own block like you did? And there's no reason that you can't do that. In fact, I encourage you to do that because it's a great way of trying out the system. Uh, just make sure you cut it as precision as you can. You're, of course, going to want to use uh, good quality hardwood. And you're going to want to have the moisture content down around 6 or 8% because you don't want this to move very much uh, with moisture content moving back and forth. You want it as stable as you can get it. Uh, and it's a great idea to try that and see if you like the system. And if you do, and you do want to move to the metal blocks, you can do that later on. Well, that concludes my video for today, and I still have a little bit of a stockpile uh, that some people have sent me, so I've got those to come yet. But if you've got something that you use in your workshop, send it to me. I'd love to see what it is if I haven't used it. Uh, I'll try and include it in a future episode, and we can all learn together on these things. I'm Colin Kinnett for Woodwork Web. Thanks for watching.